All right, as we expect more results today from the National Coalition Center, Abuja, the conduct of INEX ad hoc staff have been questioned, they've been called into question. Some are asking, did they get the right training before being deployed to the field? And this is a question that, you know, we're going to be asking shortly. Let's now bring in our guest. Uh, his name is Afolabi Adekayoja. He's the lead researcher, Center for Democracy and Development, West Africa. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, we would like you to please me. unmute your mic. Oh, yeah. And as you do that, I'd like you to respond to, you know, the question that I had asked, talking about um, INEX ad hoc staff. There have been questions and conversations as to the quality of their character, their integrity, as well as how adequately trained they were. From your analysis, what would you say uh, about this? So one thing that we've been able to determine, especially when it comes to the conduct of the election, uh, was that many of the uh, of the different areas were born even across the different parts of the country. So when it comes to the conduct of staff, when it comes to the deployment of materials, when it comes to even the starting time. And I think this is something that has really been covered by the different uh, posts and different observer missions that were around during the election period. So we're actively trying to see you know, where, the, where, where the gap was and where the particular challenge was. We've gotten different reports about how INEX staff were unable to operate the machine effectively uh, in several parts of the country and then where, where then where there were issues, they were able to get particular you know, the technicians to come in and to try to, to address the situation. But ultimately, one thing that we're actually also trying to monitor and trying to, to get some more feedback and clarity on really is that the training that was actually carried out and then the support for INEX staff, you know, was it uniform across the board? And if so, why were there challenges in some parts of the country and not in the others? We're also trying to look at the organizations and the agencies that were partnered with and then how they can be better and more sustainable arrangements going forward. Uh, one of the examples also being the NYC, uh, the National Youth Service Corps, uh, with, which unfortunately some corporates were actually affected uh, and have been put at dead uh, because of their role during, the, uh, during the, the election process on Saturday. So ultimately, was quite patchy uh, and there were quite some significant divergences especially when you look at the reports from different geopolitical zones and something that we're actively trying to see uh we're hoping and we're actively calling uh, on a uh, on a strong post-election report uh, review so that there can be better clarity and so that there can be stronger uh recommendations that are put forward that are sustainable and they're practical uh, well, I mean, some of the things that you mentioned, you know, might be, or well, you've said, you know, could be from uh, poor training and some of all of that. But, you know, if we've looked at some of the reports that we've also gotten, um, you know, would you say that it goes beyond just poor training? Could some of it have been intentional, um, you know, in ways to sabotage uh, the elections? Have you have you seen, you know, evidence that might be pointing in, in that direction? So a lot of these uh, issues, especially when it comes to, to pegging it on on different on different institutions, really it comes down to the structure and to the different organizations and the different uh, stakeholders that drive or that are involved in the election space uh, and the different responsibility area that they have and even just the different operating uh, and response mechanisms. So, take for example, when it comes to logistics, you know, it is primarily it is INEC. INEC is responsible for that. But then when it comes to deploying that across the country, INEC relies on other government agencies to also carry that out. The same way when it comes to security, you also have to, you know, you look at the different security agencies and they're the ones that are responsible for actively managing that uh, on election day. So it's really a whole of government's approach. It's really a whole, you know, it's a, it's a really intergovernmental uh, structure in trying to, to, to deal with this. And that is why we're actively trying to, you know, to manage how this goes forward, because it's one thing to just, you know, throw the book on INEC and then I'll see you and just, you know, everything is okay. And then in order to actually look at how, you know, we can get sustainable solutions going forward. Uh, whether, so there were definitely some pockets of progress, you know, where INEC definitely recorded some, you know, so some improvements on previous elections. And then there were many areas that were documented, you know, that needed to have been, to, to, that where they needed to have in progress, uh, when I joined rightly and sadly, you know, were disappointed, uh, because the standard that they expected from INEC wasn't there. So really the case about looking at the structure, you know, and how we can make sure that for future elections, future, uh, for future policies that the, 
reform and any of the changes that are actually sustainable and actually feasible because then that actually makes the election uh, going forward actually you know, better and uh, much more credible. The irregularities that we've seen as regards these elections have sprung up, have caused a lot of um, reactions to spring up, one of which would be the staging a walkout of Dino Milaye and other party agents. We're also seeing that there's a petition that's trending online. They're signing a pe petition to reject electoral fraud by INEC. I'd like your thoughts on this. So what we are quite... Um, so to be fair, the first challenge really is that there is a policy uh, and that they and they are set down uh, avenues to address any any concerns and any uh, you know and any problems that arise. I, I actively hope the calling on Nigerians and we are quite optimistic so far that Nigerians are following the set policies and the set avenues. So in terms of you know laying their their complaints against uh, against INEC and then actively calling on INEC as well and other institutions to to respond appropriately and hastily so that these things can be can be managed quite well. Well, to um, deal with many of these, especially um, addressing them, we we really do still need to wait to see how the rest of these, to see how the rest of the results are, but also to see this exact policy and response that INEC has given. Uh, granted, INEC particu has particularly very strong power when it comes to the conduct of the election. So one of the things that INEC needed to have done better was they wouldn't just clarify communication. Uh, and addressing many of the misconceptions around that. So, for example, uh, people are under the impression that coalition is done uh, virtually or through the uh, or through IREV uh, when the results are uploaded on BVAS. But coalition is still done manually. That's something that's in the law. So, it's one of these different things where where these misconceptions play a part in you know in aggravating and allowing misinformation to even go further. Now. We are definitely no members, uh, you know, like we're definitely no staff of INEC, you know, and as a, and as a think tank, we actively try to ensure that our reports and our knowledge output balances and have a, a much more, you know, nuanced and very fair and, you know, reports. So there are areas where we would definitely say that INEC had improved for previous elections and there are areas that we would definitely say that INEC had also not gone as well. But, uh, to go back to your particular question is really ultimately coming down to a case of where, where there were any, um, you know, because essentially the ones that I've actively mentioned, uh, that INEC is able to put out a very robust and very proactive communication structure that says, we understand and we, are, and we acknowledge that these are areas that you cited and that we will actively try to respond to that. These are the ways and this is, and this is the manner, this is the manner that with which you can do so. Uh, and then trying to provide avenue for any Nigerian or other issues so that these, so that when the results are fully litigated, uh, fully reviewed and audited that uh, there is no doubt that this is the voice uh, the manager of the people. Oh, well, um, can you quickly or just clarify for our viewers um, before I ask you know you know the next question? The, you spoke about collation being um, you know done by, manually and not by IRF. Can you clarify exactly you know how collation is carried out and where there is some confusion? Because uh, I think it's one of the things that um, uh, Senator Dino Melai spoke about yesterday and complained. And you know, was asking that the um, election officers uh, state that exactly what is on the IRF is what they are going to be calling out. You know, so help us understand where there might be some confusion. So the Electoral Act, uh, particularly, gives INEC the authority to determine the, ma the manner that the results are transmitted. So the results that are transmitted, you know, that they are publicised, and then also to keep. The national online register uh, of past election results. Now, the difference there being that when it comes to collating the results, so you know after it's been counted and then moving from level to level, you know from you know, polling units to ward to LG to state and then to federal, uh, that is total manual. In terms of the the um, you know the the counting and then the addition of results, that is still done at all, all, all the different levels. So that shouldn't be relied upon to get done by IREV. Now, part of where the challenge here is that clearly this is still something that wasn't really well communicated to so the main Nigerians that still believe that it's something that has to be done by IREV. Secondly, when uh, INEC had the challenges on uploading 
the results on IREP, it wasn't very specific. And it wasn't very you know, proactive in communication and saying, look, um, we underestimated when we looked at Osho and Akiti last year and we needed to upscale and we did upscale that better. Or the servers were not as strong as we thought that they would be. But then look at but then we are showing you that the results will be will be, will be up soon enough. What we saw was a case where so the tourism and house of reference elections were going up, presidential wasn't wasn't going up. So that gap and that delay really led to, you know, to many of the different theories that started going around on social media about how, you know, was this a case of sabotage, or was this a case of the ruling party or any other you know, strong stakeholders actively trying to get involved in changing the results. And obviously in a very sensitive election like this, you know, many of these different uh, avenues can be used by any different group to really, you know, incite, you know, to really incite violence and to really rally their supporters. Um, so in a, to really sum up the response, uh, INEC is bound by law to carry out manual collation, which means that this is done when the, the officers physically present the numbers and then it is now tabulated. It's the reason why, despite several states having to, having, having already called, uh, their results in their different states, the RECs, the resident electric commissioners, uh, you know, and the, uh, and the scope still need to come to Abuja and formally declare the results with, the INEC chair at the National Coalition Center. So that's part of the whole process why it has to be done manually. Now, presenting it online, you know, INEC needed to have been, INEC would have done better mm-hmm. in ensuring that there was better clarity, you know, in terms of people understanding that this is where the the situation and this is what the gaps might be on the IRF and where possible trying to ensure that the results were up there so that citizens could see and compare them at the same time. And I know that there'd be different glitches, you know, be, um, social media is a go of different instances where, you know, some some uh, some staff have mistakenly uploaded their pictures instead of uploading the results or where the results for a particular LGA have been got, have gone to a particular to a different state entirely. So many of these things are, you know, obviously a like human error that could easily have been avoided. But the problem is that especially in an election and in a structure where there is little uh, where where there's a very strong trust deficits, the organizations that are involved need to do more to convince Nigerians. And then the lack of proactive communication is an issue that needs, that obviously, that needs to have been addressed. All right. Um, I'd like you to also share your thoughts on the statement or the, I don't know if you've been able to see the press release by former President uh, Olusha Gombasanjo and how he's... Um, or urged the uh, president of the federal republic of nigeria to exercise caution and ensure that the wrongs are being corrected and that INEC, you know takes that into consideration as well that the will of the people will be fully expressed part of the conversation we heard was that president Muhammad Buhari was keen on leaving a legacy of having conducted a free fair credible election do you see that happening even as we count down to the gubernatorial elections in a few days do you see the possibility of us being able to look at the elections and say that eventually this you know would be a free fair credible election just like president muhammad buhari wanted and just like the people of nigeria deserve the the challenge the challenges that are that are present are really quite a lot uh, and and that's the reason why when you have many of these particular situations and a quite seasoned statesmen coming out to make reports to try to calm down quality because uh because while many nigerians would have focused on the particular parts on the different quests that Basanjo made um the part that we particularly are quite you know keen on is the area where he called for calm uh, to ensure that many nigerians still you know take the proper avenues in a democratic society to, uh, to to address their situations and to try to make sure that we can get and uh, to keep a very good uh, a very calm landscape and environment as we try to resolve these issues the the challenge here now really comes down to um the the outcome and not just in terms of the person the people who get elected in different positions but also how i can ensure that at no point was there any compromise uh was it was the integrity of the election process compromised and that's where the challenge now comes in in terms of now taking on board in the different recommendations that have been made and then trying to ensure that it's not managed going forward is making sure that Arab is much more stable and stronger so that for the governorship elections that take place on the 11th uh which is next which is the the um you know, next Saturday of this one um that many of the different corrections are already put in place so that many of the and the data we heard here are not 
uh, you know, as prevalent then or are completely wiped out. It's really about being responsive and also being, you know, proactive and being engaging, especially when it comes to the Nigerian populace. Now, when now ultimately, in terms of the particular steps that are going to go for, we're expecting clarity from my neck on that. So we know that the chair had that out that he was let the the INEC was going to address the Nigeria people. Uh, I think today, when the coalition opens at 11 a.m., or maybe in between one of the different laws, when when the different states are taking their time to come to Abuja. So we are expecting some more clarity. Uh, and that is actually something that's really important. So we know Nigeria deserves to know how this election has gone, where the challenges have been, and then where things can be addressed going forward. Uh, it is where there is no communication that people now assume you know, the worst, and then there's little or no information to even counter that. And in an era where information is very is easily democratized and where anybody, uh, where a lot of these things are, are easily accessible, and news platforms can can, can, can spring up on, on social media and where information can just be you know quite information can get virally spread before there's even any good measure of fact checking to even make sure that it's actually proper, valid, and authentic. It's, these are things that really need to be you know, to be put in place to ensure that we can avoid any of these things that can inflame the policy. Oh, well, um, final question, because we need to go, um, if you can squeeze this in in 30 seconds or a minute. Um, there have also been reports of uh, voter intimidation, violence, you know, in certain parts of the country. Um, of course, there are still unverified reports of uh, people being forced, you know, sometimes at gunpoint to change, you know, results, once again, unverified. Um, you know, and you, you, multiple times you've said, you know, of course, uh, these things need to be improved upon, you know, going forward in the next elections and some of all of that. Um, would you say that these concerns, you know, should maybe be ignored or do we just, you know, say that, well, it is what it is and look forward to the next elections and do better? Or would you advise, you know, from CDD that INEC maybe needs to cancel some of these, um, you know, polling units and places where these reports were taken, uh, were made? Well, we definitely don't think that things should be taken as, you know, as this is what it is. You know, we definitely should be moving forward in terms of the democratic process. Uh, what we will be calling for is for, I know, it, for thorough investigation and for clarity on steps going forward. Uh, so in the areas where there are clear, you know, violations of the electoral act, where, you know, where there's literally little or no, no points to to even doubt it. The INEC needs to do the needful in accordance to the Electoral Act. Uh, and then INEC needs to also clarify and communicate the decisions that's taken many of these different positions. So it is ultimately clear that INEC has a lot of power in this particular process. Um, INEC needs to, be, to respond to Nigeria and explain why it has taken particular decisions. Uh, and then where there are issues, then INEC needs to be held to account through all that means, whether it's going through litigation or going through the law. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Falabi, for joining us this morning. Um, the, of course, conversations, do, um, you know, continue. Uh, coalition is still ongoing. Uh, there will be more and more of these uh, uh, things unfolding in the next couple of days. But we'd like to speak with you again. Thanks for your time. Thank you.